Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie, and in this video, I'm giving you a full ship tour of the Carnival Venezia. I'm gonna share all my favorite secret spots and what I thought about how Carnival took this Costa ship and turned it into a fun ship. Our cruise set sail on July 25th, 2023 from the Manhattan Cruise Terminal in downtown New York City. I was surprised when we pulled up and saw that Costa funnel. I don't know why, but I was expecting to see the Carnival Whale Tail. Now, if you've sailed Carnival before, this deck plan might look a little familiar. It is the same as the Vista class ships. To get our tour started, we're going to start here on deck 10 in the aft of the ship. This is where you'll find the sunshine deck. Deck 10 is one of the main decks that goes all the way across and is full of lots of different fun activities, restaurants, bars, and pools. To the left here as you're facing the aft, this is the seating area for the seafood shack, and I'll show you that in a minute. You'll also find a drink station. You can see there's a whirlpool, the main pool, and then another whirlpool. Now, this place was packed on all of our sea days because it is the better pool, and I'll show you why when we get a chance to see that main pool. So you have the additional whirlpool over to the side, and you have these incredible wake views as you're sailing in and out of port. So here is that seafood shack I was talking about. This is an extra charge dining option where you order a la carte. So if you want your lobster, clams, you're gonna pay market price. On the other side is one of the included options, the Pizza del Capitano. This was open pretty much all the time. It was opened around 9 a.m. in the morning, open all the way to 4 a.m. Now I'm gonna do a special video just on dining, so look for that in my feed coming up. The included beverages are lemonade, iced tea, and water, as well as coffee coffee and hot tea. If you want additional beverages, you'll need to pay extra for those. High chairs are available near all of the dining venues. If you don't spot one, like that one kind of hiding in the corner, definitely ask a crew member to track one down for you. Now we're gonna head up to deck 11 here on the aft or back portion of the ship. This is another Sunday area overlooking the pool. This is a great spot to watch sail away, especially from the Manhattan Cruise Terminal. You get some incredible views. The Statue of Liberty will be on the starboard side usually, unless the captain takes an alternative route. Heading up to deck 12, this is the sports deck. You have these outdoor exercise equipment. Now, have you ever used these? Has anyone you know used these? I'm really curious because they do give a lot of space for them. Then you have the basketball court. So the entrance to the basketball court is going to be on deck 11, but I thought this gave you a good overview. There were a lot of people playing basketball during our cruise, but you can see they also have the soccer nets uh, or football, if you're not from the U.S., that they can set up and play. And then here's some of those gorgeous Manhattan views. Now the views are great, but the boarding and disembarking experience are terrible at the Manhattan Cruise Terminal. I probably won't sail from it again. It is absolute chaos, at least on the street level. There are people, going, there's basically one lane to get into and out of the cruise terminal. And if you show up between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., there are still people disembarking the ship. There are people trying to get out. You're trying to get in. If you take an Uber, I recommend having them drop you off across the street as long as you can manage your own luggage and then just walking into the cruise terminal. It'll be so much easier. Now, on to some more fun activities. This is the mini golf course. So the mini golf course is included in your cruise fare. They also set up some cornhole there you can play. Uh, this was very active at night, especially with the teen group. Uh, so we, we would come up here. Then the ropes course uh, also included heads around the top of the deck. And I think some people uh, were a little more wobbly at it than they anticipated. You'll also find the entrance to the warehouse arcade. Now this is not included. So this is going to be an extra charge where like you would have a video arcade on land. So we just pay whatever it costs, it gets charged to your sale and sign card, but just pay attention uh, to how much you're spending there. You can talk to guest services um, about putting limits on your kids' cards if that becomes an issue. So that's a, a fun little area. The Warehouse Arcade also has a stairwell that leads down to where the kids' clubs are located. I'll show you the entrances to those later in the video, but I don't include them because there's kids in there, and I don't think a lot of parents want their kids on the internet without their permission. But Carnival has a robust 
Kids Club program from three to teens where they have scheduled activities. Now we headed up the stairs to find the rest of the mini golf course and the entrance to the ropes course. Outside the ropes course will be posted the rules, what requirements are. Be sure to pay attention to height and weight requirements as well as what footwear may be required. So you definitely wanna wear closed toed shoes. Here's a view looking towards the front of the ship. So that's where you can see the water slides and then a peek down to movies under the stars screen and a closer look at that ropes course and that Costa funnel that I told you really surprised me as we were pulling up to the port. I wonder if they'll ever change it to the wheel tail. Heading back down to deck 11, this is the information on the jogging track. It is four laps to one mile. Continuing around, we're going to take a bigger peek down at that pool deck. Now you can see this is the lid or the top of the pool. So in inclement weather, it can be put over the top of the pool. Now it's really helpful to understand that this ship was designed for China because it is a cold weather ship. Like look, the pool area can completely close off. That pool area is a little bit closed in, which I did not love. I'm actually really surprised Carnival is sailing it in the Caribbean. Now there is trees down under that circle. So if you look down, you can see trees that are on the pool deck and I'll point them out later. Now here to the water slide water park area. This is where a lot of kids tend to hang out during the sailing. So you have your splash park. I did film it in the morning when it wasn't turned on. So we didn't have to worry about having a bunch of kids around and it is glass enclosed to keep some of the spray down, but they have the chaise chairs around it. So as a parent or adult for a child, you can hang out and enjoy the sun while they're splashing around in the splash park with the water slides. There are lifeguards available in this area and throughout the cruise ship. Now that not all cruise ships has that, have that. So I think that's important to note. So this splash area is a little more geared towards younger children, and then they'll have a lot of fun on those adventurous slides as they get older. Heading forward on the ship past the splash park, we're going to head inside and head towards the Cloud 9 Spa. One little difference of the Cloud 9 Spa is that it does not have the thermal suite. You know that area with steam rooms, saunas, and bubbly thalassotherapy whirlpools? Not on this ship, so keep that in mind. But they do have the wide range of treatments you've come to know and love, so facials, massages, and the, like that seaweed wrap treatment. Now, if you head kind of a little bit to the right and then straight, you'll find the fitness center all the way forward. The fitness center is included. So lots of cardio machines, weightlifting machines. There are fitness trainers on board. You can pay to meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. You can have a free initial assessment. The fitness trainers also offer different seminars throughout the sailing. And there are a few included fitness classes or a few available for extra charge. Heading up the stairs just outside the spa, we're going to find the entrance to the Serenity area. Now, this is the adults only area all the way at the front of the ship with some upgraded amenities, I would say. You have nice, nicer lounge chairs, they have extra padding, um, a really lovely area. Now, one thing you might note if you've been on the Vista class ships is all the greenery. That was one big difference I really noticed um, on the sailing was there was a lot more greenery that must be left over uh, from that Italian design. The other Another thing to note is these black cushions. Oh my goodness, so hot. I love how they have set up these little cabanas. There's another place on the ship they have something similar that's available for all ages. I'll show you that a little bit later. At the more aft part of the Serenity, you overlook the slides, so this may be a good place to keep an eye on your kiddos. Now, black to, back to those black pads. They get so hot. So just be really careful. Make sure you put down a towel if you're going to lay out on those. Hopefully they'll be replaced because they're really warm. So there, that was the ladies' uh, bathroom. They have one whirlpool on this side and they have this cool design. I really like it. It, it makes me feel like I'm in an Aperol Spritz commercial for some reason. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, lots of umbrellas. So I think they've done a good job creating shade. You have your own bar in this area of Serenity and they create, tried to create like little spaces. So you see how it's like two chairs here, two chairs there and little dividers. So you don't feel like you're just lined up one person right next to the other, like on the main pool deck. I also like how they included couches. I, a lot of my clients don't necessarily want to lay in a lounge chair all day, but they do want to sit and chat, maybe play cards out in the sun. So that provides an alternative option to just, you know, laying on one of these hot lava 
<laughs> black cushions. It's not too bad if you put down a towel. So here you can see the other Whirlpool uh, on this side. This also was very busy during our sailing, especially when we got a little bit closer to the Caribbean. And it's basically exactly the same on both sides. On this side is going to be the men's restroom, basically in the same spot that we saw the ladies' restroom on the other side. And again, all these plants I really love. Let's head inside to the forward elevators for a little tutorial about how to use them. These elevators are a little bit different. You have to request one to go to the deck you want to go to. So you walk up to these boxes, you press what deck you want to go to, and here's the trick. Make sure to press for the number of people you have traveling so you don't end up in full elevators. It'll give you the elevator letter, so here it was X. Stand in front of X, the door will open, you'll go in. You will not be able to change the deck once you're inside. It will just take you to deck 10. Now we're heading towards the back of the ship to enter the main pool deck area. You can find the towels here on the starboard side of the forward part of the ship in the pool. And here is the pool deck. Now, if you've read any reviews of this ship, this is a common source of complaints among Carnival cruisers. You see, they did add a screen over the stage that was already there so they could have movies under the stars, but it's very enclosed. Again, remember, this ship was designed for China. Now this was cleared in the morning. They do have lounge chairs here normally around the pool. This is from the morning of the towel animal takeover where they bring out all the towel animals and arrange them on the pool deck. Now this is the pool bar area. So again, if you have in your mind red frog rum bar and then you come here and it's more enclosed and inside, I could see how you would be disappointed. Across the way we have Blue Java Cafe. So this is an extra charge area. It is the kind of specialty coffee shop. They also have gelato ice cream. You can see here for an extra charge, all the different flavors. The flavors can change daily depending on, you know, the gelato master. Here's the extra charge desserts. Now I'm curious, have any of you ever bought one of these? Do you have a favorite that you always get uh, when you head to Java Blue? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious. And then you can see this full menu of coffee, spiked coffees, milkshakes, floats. They also have my favorite bubbly water, energy drinks, again, all an extra charge. It does have a guy's burgers joint. So this condiment area will look very familiar to you if you've been on other carnival ships. So you have your onions, your chili, your shoestring potatoes, your lettuce, tomato, onions, pickles, and then the different sauces, the different guys' burger sauces. They did add two new burgers, the pepperoni pizza burger and the super melty mousse. I will have uh, reviews of that in my dining video. Tomodoro, this replaces blue iguana. So they're doing kind of a mix. So it has tacos, but then it also has a meatball hero, a Sicilian chicken wrap and a pork sandwich. So those are the sneak peek of those. It's a torta de milanese. It's the pork sandwich, but you can still get your burritos um, on the other side of the line. And you have your salsa bar, which if you've watched my other carnival cruise ship videos, you know, I love that watermelon jicama salsa. Heading up the stairs from the pool deck, we'll find these upper level lounge areas that go all the way around the pool. These are great. I think they're beautiful. They were a great place to hang out, great for family groups to get together, maybe play games, read a book. On both sides, you have seats that face out. So if you wanted to enjoy the view as you're sailing along, the windows open to give you a little extra ventilation. And then you have seats that face in. We actually sat here and watched the movies under the stars video. You do have to kind of turn the chairs a little bit. Here's that tree I was talking about when we saw those circles on the upper deck. They give sunlight to the trees below. And there's a large game area. So they have bocce ball. We were joking. You can't have an Italian ship without bocce ball. So here's where you're going to find it on deck 11 mid ship. You also find the ping pong tables here. Now this is great for ping pong. You don't have to worry about it blowing over board, heading down to the pool deck. You also have your foosball table and then more tables and chairs. So a lot of people would get their food downstairs for guys burgers or Tomodoro and bring it up here because it was a little less busy than the main pool deck. Now this area right here is a hot spot. It was my favorite place to watch the deck parties because you can see the main screen. You can see the deck party. Mark Hugh did a great job getting the crowd going at all of the different evening activities. They even have a special Italian night where they have Italian themed activities and they even pass around food. Now you want to be on the main pool deck for the food for that party. Pergola bar up here if you wanted to grab a drink. There wasn't really waiters walking around up here, but you could just easily 
walk to that pergola bar if you want to make the most of your cheers drinks package so this is exactly the same as the other side some seats that face out and then more couches and tables the library is located here this is kind of just a get one take one but they also had board games so that just you know led into this being a great area for families to get together groups of people to get together and play games play cards um, enjoy the music coming from the pool deck there was a steel drum player on the pool deck also on this level you're going to find the entrance to the kids programs here's that little staircase i was talking about that goes up and down to the warehouse arcade the kids programming is included uh, there is extra charges if you need after hours care but otherwise if you just want to come and hang out in the general areas you can find that here so just give you a sense of where we are so that's the pool deck the pergola bar and then the large camp ocean area now deck, back on the main pool deck you can see they do have life jackets available for the kiddos and then another just view of the pool looking out uh, towards the main stage Swirls is the soft serve ice cream. We are heading into the buffet now. So they have frozen yogurt as well as ice cream. The frozen yogurt flavors were chocolate and strawberry during our cruise. The ice cream flavors were vanilla and chocolate. Now heading into the buffet, this is at embarkation day, but it was this busy throughout the entire sailing. I think it's just such cute decorations with having like the green carpeting and the greenery on the trees and the little umbrellas. It's supposed to make you feel like you're outside so I really like the decoration in this part of the buffet so this is the front part or the area more towards midship of the buffet this is where your themed items are going to be and they do post a little menu at the beginning of the buffet so you can see what they have so they have a large salad bar and then you're going to find um, the main items now it's the same on both sides so you can start on either end and work towards the middle and you're going to find the same food they also have the big desserts thing here where you can have them cut you a piece of pie they have jello and fruit available now we're heading towards the back so we're going to come to the second section of the buffet and you can see more of that great decoration i think they included so much greenery because they thought people were going to be inside so much on cold weather sailings now we're in the aft part of the buffet so this is the comfort kitchen part so this is kind of more your homegrown items you're going to find throughout the cruise it also has its own salad bar this one's a little bit smaller than the one that's in the uh, section that's a little more towards midship but this section has more prepared salad so if you like someone taking the workout for you this would be a good spot and then you have those homegrown favorites again the line's going to be the same on both sides moving towards the center and the center where is, your, is where you're going to find the carved meats every day this is also where you'll find the deli uh, that is included that has extended hours it's open late into the evening till about 11 p.m at the entrance to the buffet you'll find hand washing stations please use them and that is it for deck 10 11 and 12 now we're going to head down to deck 5. we are here in the aft or back of deck 5 where you'll find the carnival bar and lounge on the other vista class ships this is the havana area so it may look a little familiar though the decoration is quite different it has more of that italian theming that we've seen throughout the ship this was the hot spot for karaoke every evening there was also a latin duo that played you'll notice the stage here is quite small so it doesn't have the space for a full band like you find in the other havana lounges on the other vista class ships but this dance floor was Full. every night they really enjoyed that uh, that Latin duo there's a beautiful bar area great bartenders back here and then in the morning they set out a continental breakfast for guests in the terrazzo cabin so you need to have booked a terrazzo cabin to have access to this outdoor deck area during the day uh, you'll get a wristband in your cabin and that is required I have a future video coming out that talks more about this area and the cabins and whether I recommend it so hopefully you'll subscribe and look for that coming up on the trips with Angie YouTube channel this is a beautiful deck area you can see they have umbrellas they also have these shaded areas with couches we saw one or two people taking naps out here but it is really nice to have space for larger groups together you do have a whirlpool on this side and then there's another one on the other side as well your chaise loungers and you have a beautiful view of the wake of the ship i really like this the havana section does not have this on the vista class ships these set down benches it gives you an absolutely beautiful view then if we head to the other side we're going to see it's very similar again more of that greenery that i was talking about that really picks up that italian 
theming more umbrellas. Now it was a bit windy, so you couldn't always use the umbrellas. So if you're a person that really needs shade, you're probably gonna wanna tuck in under here in one of these couch areas. And here you can see the other whirlpool with a lift in case uh, you have any mobility challenges, they'll be able to move it in. Now it does take a bit of time because they do need to track down a crew member. Now here is you're gonna be able to find the cabana cabins. So these are a special class of cabins where you have your own patio. I'll be posting a full review of my experience in one of these Terraza staterooms. So look for that coming up on the Trips with Angie channel. Coming out of the Carnival Lounge, we're going to pass the entrance to those Terraza staterooms and head towards the Gondola Lounge. This is one of the main spaces on board. You're definitely going to want to know where it is. You have the Gondola Lounge bar with a couple tables and chairs, as well as the main lounge areas. This is where the trivias took place, the activities, and an absolutely incredible band. If they have an afternoon Rat Pack set, you want to go. It was tremendous. I absolutely loved it. We also had a guitar player and then the Latin duo played here as well. Heading outside, we're going to we're going to go all the way around. We're going to check out the entire outside of deck 5. Here you see the entrance to those Terraza staterooms. You do need access. You can only get through that door if you're staying in one of them. So you can't walk all the way around deck 5, but you can get pretty close. This outdoor area was very popular for people playing card games. This is the outdoor seating to one of the restaurants, one of the specialty restaurants. I'll show you when we're inside which one. Hint, it's the Italian one. Then you have this cute little bench. I, it's not very comfortable. I think it's just kind of for photos would be my guess. And then you head to a lot of couches and a lot of really interesting seating. So the one thing I really appreciate about Carnival and Deck 5, it's one of my favorite decks. I often call it like the secret deck or the highly recommended seating is that you have a lot of options of places to hang out. The one downside is that there's not bar service. So if you're a person who likes to get a drink frequently, you're going to have to walk inside to one of the bars um, or just take a sober minute and just enjoy the outside. So this is the outdoor seating for Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse. Again, you can sit indoors or outdoors. They do have um, these sheets of plastic that come down. So to kind of break the wind or to insulate it a little bit more if it's really windy outside. This is a great spot if you like to watch the ship docking. You can really like look straight down and see all around the docking. Now, this is my favorite spot. So remember when we were up on Serenity, I said there are some really cool alternative spots. This is it. So you have the two chaise loungers and a little table. Now this is all ages. So if you have a teenager who just likes to chill and read and not be around a lot of people, highly recommend sending them down to deck five. No one will bother them. It's not very busy. The specialty dining does not have lunches. So it's not like there's going to be people sitting outside eating. It's just going to be very, very chill and they'll be able to read their book. So love, love this spot um, if you're someone who likes quiet and just chill. Then continuing around deck five, again, we're heading towards the front of the ship. We're going to find even more seating. Now, this is a great spot if you guys just want to get together before dinner, you have a larger group. Uh, they were washing the cushions here. Normally, these would all have those big fluffy cushions like you find in Serenity. All right, we're going to go all the way to the front of the ship. It gets a little bit narrow here. Uh, watch out for that stairwell up there. Uh, that is crew access only. So here we are, the front of the ship. And now I'm going to take you to what I like to call the secret decks on the Carnival Venenzia. So if you head up this staircase, you're going to be on deck six and there's lounge chairs. Uh, these are ocean view cabins that face the front of the ship. And there's lots of lounge chairs out here. So again, another great spot and it goes up to deck seven as well. So deck six and seven forward. If you go up and down these stairs, you're going to find chaise loungers. Again, if you just want a space to get away from it all. Now that pool is crew area. So people were asking me how to get there. <laughs> you don't. That forward area is a lounge and pool and, and crew area for their relaxation. But again, these staircases go up to deck six and deck seven and have what I like to call the secret sun decks uh, because I don't think many people know about them. Obviously, I think the people in those forward ocean view cabins are going to be mad. I told you, uh, don't tell them it was me. All right, so heading around, so we've come around the front of the ship, and now you can see on this side, it's a very similar setup. This side has a little more umbrellas, again, with the uh, lounge chairs, and this was cordoned off. So while the ship is taking fuel, this is the smoking area. So this is the starboard side, the outdoor smoking area. They will, they will shut that down. 
So while they're taking in fuel, you cannot smoke outside anywhere on the ship because it's too dangerous. Here is the Teatro Rosa. That was my worst Italian accent. This is the theater. Um, it has a bar at the back of the theater. We had four production shows, which I was very impressed with on our eight night sailing. Uh, there was also a couple external performers that came in, but the playlist cast productions were very, very well done. Heading towards midship. So again, now we're back. We're at the front of deck five, leaving the theater, heading towards the back. So they were uh, filling up all their shops at Embarkation. I'd never seen a shop open at Embarkation before, so it was kind of funny uh, walking around, seeing them with all the boxes, trying to reload all of their goodies for you to buy. So deck five is going to be your shopping mecca. Lots of uh, shops here, your fine jewelry, your watches, as well as some clothing items. Looking down, so this has that Skyscape um, digital thing on the Vista class here, it's just a large statue of a lion with wings. So this kind of gives you a better view of what it looks like. The beauty salon is located here on deck five. It is not upstairs with the spa. Inside you'll find the hair salon. So if you need to have updo for formal night, as well as manicures and pedicures, you can make reservations in advance. I actually found a great deal for a pedicure in advance. So always check carnival.com to see what deals they have. Down the hallway, we're gonna find the piano bar 88. It was used for a lot of special events during our sailing, but at night the bar would open and it would be your favorite sing-along piano player. I like how they separated it from the steakhouse. In the Vista class, um, this is the piano bars here next to the steakhouse, but here on the Venezia, across the way is the Bonsai Teppanyaki. So there are four Teppanyaki tables. It was open for lunch and dinner. It is an extra charge. You absolutely need reservations. Just like the pedicure, you can make it in advance at carnival.com or through the Hub app. Hopefully you know how to do that because you have watched my Hub app tutorial here on the channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, definitely consider subscribing. I post all kinds of cruise ship and resort tours, tips, and tricks. Around the corner, we'll find Bonsai Sushi. This was packed during our cruise. One night, we had to wait 35 minutes to get in, which is unheard of for Bonsai Sushi. So definitely a very popular option. And you can sit at the sushi bar or at one of the tables. Uh, the glass enclosed circle here looks down over the casino. It is a smoking casino. That's why it's glass enclosed. Fahrenheit Steakhouse is another specialty restaurant. It is an extra charge and requires reservations. As we saw from before, it has indoor and outdoor seating options. I love the red carpet in here. I think it feels very luxurious. It has the open kitchen, so you can kind of take a peek in at the chefs as they're preparing your meal. Over here is the Amari Bar. This is the alchemy bar in all senses of the word, but they do have a special menu just for this ship. So they kind of have the Venezia menu and then the alchemy bar favorites. So if you're an alchemy bar fan, you're going to want to head there. There's more shops. Uh, this one was more like purses and accessories as you head towards the back of deck five coming up on Frizzant. So this is a Venezia exclusive. It has a lot of different spritzes. So if you're a fan of Aperol spritz, it has a number of different spritzes. It had our favorite bartenders on board. I absolutely had a blast with them. It was very popular bar. Highly recommend going there. They also have a number of different espresso martinis, if that's your jam. Il Viaggio is a specialty restaurant just for this ship. It is Italian classics, and they highlight what regions of Italy they come from. This sunglass hut was never open. Never saw it open one time <laughs> during our entire sailing. We thought it was a mystery. Then you have your photos. Uh, you can also view your photos through the Hub app. So you, the photographers are located all around the ship. They take casual photos. They take photos when you arrive in port and then they set up backgrounds around the ship. Anytime they take your photo, it's free. And then if you decide you want to buy it, you can. Now we're back at Gondola Lounge and we're going to head outside again just to take a peek at the other side because this is where the bar is located just outside the entrance to the Terraza staterooms. So now we're on the starboard side. Before we walked out and went around the port side and all the way to the front, this has the smoking section as well as the Lestrada grill. This is taking place of the barbecue line that is on the other ships. So you still have some of your barbecue favorites, your macaroni and cheese, corn, sausage, chicken, as well as a couple other Italian favorites to spice it up. Heading back into deck five. Now we're going to head down to deck four. So we're at the, all the way back of the ship deck four. So this is the upper deck of the Canal Grand restaurant. 
Uh, you can take a peek in here. So this is one of the included restaurants. It was open for breakfast and dinner every day and lunch on sea days. On sea days, they have a sea day brunch uh, or we actually got lucky and ended up with regular lunch because we didn't go to port till one o'clock on one day. So this is that famous gondola. It used to actually be in the gondola lounge when the Venezia was under Costa, but they moved it here to make more, more room in the lounge for tables. There is a piano here. We did hear someone actually play it during tea time. Now we went down to deck three so you can see the proper entrance. This was the anytime dining room room. So again, if you watch my hub app tutorial, you know that you can check in for your dining in the hub app if you have the anytime dining. So you don't have to wait at the dining room. They will let you know when your table's available. Now we're going to head towards the front of the ship here on deck four. We'll find the limelight lounge. If you love comedy, you are very familiar with this lounge because this is where the comedy shows take place every evening. Most people, uh, you have to line up 30 to 40 minutes in advance to even get in. Comedy is very popular on carnival ships. Heading forward, you'll also find the art gallery. There were a couple art auctions while we were on board and some presentations. You'll also find the pictures do change throughout your sailing. The Heroes Bar here is this is your sports bar on the ship. It uh, has great comfortable seating, great bartenders. So this is a great place to hang out. And then if you want to watch any games, they'll have them satellite pending. Because remember, the TV does come through a satellite, so it's not always 100%. Uh, if you take a left at the elevator bank, you'll find what's called the Casino Annex. This is the non-smoking casino. If you've been on the other Vista class ships, this is the test kitchen. So if you're trying to compare the two together, this non-smoking casino was open whenever the casino was regularly open. And now we'll take a look at the smoking casino. A reminder that the casino will not be open while the ship is in port or getting close to port. It has to be in international waters. Carnival has been cracking down on smoking in the casino when it's closed or if you're not actively playing. They really want you to spend some money in order to smoke inside here on this ship. You can see it has a large number of slot machine options as well as your table games, blackjack, craps, poker. The deck four shops include the candy shop. So I know that's a crowd favorite on a lot of the carnival ships, as well as the carnival branded merchandise. So if you want a souvenir that is specifically for this ship, you want to head here to deck four. The atrium also has this small stage kind of in the middle where here's the DJ, but it, we had the violinist the guitar player, the piano player, all playing. So this is also a great spot to hear live music throughout the day. The main entrance to the theater is on deck four. We went in on deck five before. It has a beautiful bar here at the back of the theater. These sections of seatings is my favorite place to sit because it is a little more elevated. You can see better if someone sits in front of you. The upper deck is also a great area. Now, in between four and three, we're going to find kind of the secret staircase on the forward part of the ship that is going to head to the teen area. It takes a really long time to get there, and you think you're going the wrong way because you basically walk through all these hallways, but Club 02 is kind of a cool spot to hang out, and then you also have the other club for the younger kids. So, the teen and preteen areas are here. Here's the atrium from deck three. We came down that last little set of stairs. Also on deck three, you're going to find your guest services location. Guest services has two different lines. Uh, one line right here is for everyone. And then if you happen to be diamond platinum or in a suite, you have a shorter expedited line. Now you could check your account on the hub app or on kiosks located throughout the ship. You don't have to wait in line at guest services to get a copy of your bill. And I highly recommend checking your bill throughout your stay. We had a couple charges that came through on ours that weren't correct. So just keep an eye on that. You don't want to be in that long line on the last day. Here is the Marco Polo restaurant. This is the other included restaurant. On our sailing, this was used for the set dining time. So that's for people who signed up to either have early or late dining where you had a set dining time and you ate at the same table each evening. And one thing I want you not to miss is the captain's toast. If you do want to meet the captain, this is a great chance to do it. He was mingling around with everyone and he introduced all the chief officers. So that's the ship. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. What did you want to see more of? What did you want to see less of? 
Have you sailed her? What was your favorite? Also, I really hope you'll subscribe so you can see the rest of the videos in this series.